بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم علما now let's try to verify the remote access on the as now again we have seen the basic as telnet ssh these options they do provide the remote access now even you want the as should be managed remotely you want to manage the as as well remotely so that uh, i don't want to go to my console each and every time to log into the command line so i should be logged in from a remote device generally in the production network we we use a management interface and that management interface connects goes and connects to the management vlan where all your management pieces will be present and you generally do this from the management interfaces but in my lab i'm not using management interface so i'll be using um, a specific this interface or this interface i can use generally here i'll be using uh, this interface here which is my g1 interface for telnet okay so let's try to see here now the first thing the same requirement applicable here as well so let's say there is a pc here and i want to access my asa from the inside interface or from the management interface whatever it is so make sure that we do have reachability between them so if it is on a remote network then make sure that you do have a routing those kind of things you keep in mind we know that basic routing options reachability part and of course you you must have an ip address on the remote device without ip address how you are going to identify so there must be an ip address assigned to the management interface or any interface whichever you are trying to initiate a telnet connection and additional thing what you need to do is you need to configure uh the password of course telnet password we can set but whereas in the case of asa we need to enable the telnet services so the telnet services should be enabled if you want the user to be able to access via telnet so which means i need to tell my asa like by default if i go back to my topology which is already configured as per this one so i'll go to router 1 and if i try to ping to the router asa ip i do have reachability and let's say if i'm trying to telnet to the router the telnet is not going to work uh, if i try to telnet to my asa it's not going to work and the reason it is not working because by default the asa is not going to accept any connections from any side by default so telnet ssh nothing will work unless you mention unless you specify so that's what we call it as enable telnet services because by default the telnet is disabled so telnet is by default disabled on the asa and that's the reason when we try to telnet here it's not working but here we need to enable the telnet manually using the additional commands so i'm going to define i need to define saying that the telnet should be allowed from which ip you can tell the ip or the subnet and from which interface you need to define that so if you are using management then whatever the name if you are using mgmt or whatever the name you have to define that management interface again so in my case i don't have a separate uh, interface connecting to a separate router management i'm not using that way but normally it will be a separate management interface so we need to specify that so in my example let's go back to my device here on my asa i'm going to specify you can remove the access list any specific acls if we already have let's keep it as it is So I'm going to clear my configurations for access list. You can use this command to clear the configurations for access list. If you say show run access list, so I don't have any ACL right now. Now what I need to do is I need to say telnet and telnet from where you want to allow the telnet. So telnet should be allowed from 10.0.10. Network. Let's say. that's a that's a management network what i'm using and 
whatever the range of addresses you want to specify, let's say slash 24, and from which interface, inside interface or management interface, whatever it is. So once I define this command, now if I go back to router one, and if you try to telnet, the telnet works. The telnet is going to work here. Of course, there is no default password. So the default password uh, will be blank. Uh, the default password will be Cisco actually. So, so the default uh, password will be Cisco here. Let's. So normally the default login password will for the ASA will be Cisco. But again, you can go ahead and change the password and with this command. So what I'll do is I'll change the password uh, with either password or pass WD and where one, two, three, let's say that's a password. And I'm going to save this. So I'm going to try the password. Now you can see in way one, two, three, once I set the password, I'm able to log in. So you can access the device remotely from either any of the interfaces or management interface. You can do that once we uh, do the basic configurations, you need to permit this. And again, if I try to do the telnet from my any other interface, the telnet is not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work because I have only permitted this subnet, not the other subnet. So if you want to permit any other subnets in the future, Let's say I want to permit this one dot network also, then we need to say again, telnet one dot network, whatever the submit mask. And then we need to say inside. Now, once I allow that particular network, now you can, you can telnet. Now you should be able to telnet. That's what the source interface, right? You should be able to telnet here. Of course, we need to check the routing as well, because here, as per this example, there is no route back to one dot network. That's the reason I'm not able to tell it. So let me add the route as well. Route inside one dot network. Because in the previous lab, we added the route for 10.1 network, not for this one. So let's say, what's the next stop? The next stop is router one, 10.0.10.1. That's the next stop. So that was the issue. So the issue was the routing issue. So I have fixed that. So a simple thing, whenever you want to allow the telnet access to the ASA, we need to make sure that we are adding this, uh, adding this statement, which is going to tell which subnet you want to allow telnet. So additional options, you can also enable the timeout. Now timeout is like, as long as the session is ideal. Now, once we initiate a telnet connection here, now right now this session is, idle, which means I'm not doing anything. So the default timeout, which means automatically it is going to exit this telnet connection. The default timeout will be five minutes. So if there is any, uh, if there is no activity or if there is any inactivity, means no activity for the next five minutes, automatically the telnet connection will be closed, but you can change this timer by using the timeout option. So this is a kind of optional command, but let's say sometimes you don't want the five minutes, you just wanted to change into 10 minutes, then I can simply go ahead and give the command called telnet a timeout 10 minutes. So more kind of optional command, not, not a mandatory command, but if you want to change the default timeout, which is five minutes to any other time, you can use the timeout command.